Okay, welcome to episode nine of the uh, Learning React in 2021 series. Today we're going to be talking about routing. So how do you route a React application? Here's what we have from the previous video. So starting with what we had in episode eight, uh, if you're looking for the finished code for this series, if you look in GitHub, you'll find there's an episode for each, uh, or a branch for each episode, rather. Uh, episode 8 was the last one, so that's the finished code from last time, or they're pretty much the starter code for this time. And Episode 9 is what we're going to be doing today. This will be the finished code for today's video. We're going to be showing how to take React Router DOM, so this thing right here, how we can add that into our projects. Now this is an extra thing on top of React itself. So we're going to have to do an npm install or a yarn add to add this into the project. And then we're going to be talking about just the basics of routing. So how we set it up, how we can add links, how we can get the page to change what it's rendering depending on what's inside the location bar. Okay, so here's what we have right now. And these links up at the top still point to pages within the Star Wars API. They're not links within this application. But the way React works out of the box is if I was to put anything in here and hit enter, it's just going to sort of reload the home page. That's what it does. We've got one version of what the website is. And regardless of the route that we pass in, it's just going to take all these things and this is the development server that's doing this. It's just taking everything that comes in and sending it to the home page. And so we render this. Now we're going to change this. We're going to start off by going into, and you'll notice when I hit enter, the page actually reloads. When we get these links working properly, we're going to be able to click and the page won't reload. It's just going to change what's rendered on the page. So we're going to start off by installing React Router DOM, and then we're going to change these links so that they're working to change what's written here. Then I'm going to show you how you can change what's rendering on the page based on that. We're going to do a little bit of a, a rewrite of some of the main parts of the page. All right, so let's jump in here. I'm going to shut down my server. So we'll do Control C, shut it down. So the development server is not running now. What we need to add into our uh, project is either through yarn add or npm install and then it's react router dom is what we're adding now i already have this in my project i don't need to run the ad but you can go ahead and run that while that's running we've got a bunch of new components here now these are just sort of placeholder components that i built just so you wouldn't have to sit through me building them all they're all sort of the same thing uh, we've got films people and planets, and then planet, person, and film. So plural and singular versions of all those, and then main. If we go into main.js, you can see this is kind of what all these pages look like. Uh, some of them have import CSS, most of them don't. They're a function that returns a div that's got a paragraph with some text inside of it. That's all they are right now. So once this is installed, React Router DOM, once we have that, then what we're going to do is we're going to add this here. We're going to say import, and I want to bring in the top level component, browser router. Now we can rename it, we can call it as something else. You'll see a lot of code samples that'll say as router, like this. You don't have to, you can, you don't have to. And then we'll say from React Router DOM. So that gives us this component to use. And this thing actually gives us a context API, a provider that we can then use to access the routing from anywhere within our application. We're going to get into the context API shortly in a few videos from now. But for now, just know that by putting this thing right here at the top level, I'm going to be able to access all the information about my current route from anywhere inside my application. So I'll just put app on the inside of there, save it. And then that's, that's it. That's all we had to do right at the top level in index.js browser router. And we stick app inside there. Now, when I start this running, 
what's going to happen here, watch how app is going to change when this page reloads. There we go. Now app is down here. Browser routers at the top and inside that we've got router and then there's a provider for router and a router history provider. So this is basically creating the data that we'll need if we want to look at where we currently are, what the route is, what's written in the location bar, if we want to look at the history API or anything like that or the location object. This is going to give us all that information so that somewhere down here on the page, if we want to get to it, we can. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's fix those links, the ones right here at the top. Right now they're hard coded at these, or we're going through an array, I believe, to write these out and linking to this. Let's jump over to nav.js. We're not going to use these links anymore. I don't need that array. That was just really when we were first talking about mapping and creating stuff. So I'm going to delete links. This link component, we don't need that one. That's the link component that we made. There is one that comes with React Router DOM. We're going to use that. So import link. And actually, this should be inside of curly braces because it's an object inside of React Router DOM. There we go. Now we have this link object. So I'm going to get rid of my map. So it's just going to look like I'm writing out a single link, but I'm going to do this two more times. I don't need the key or the link inside of here. Instead of that, we're going to provide the things that React Router DOM wants us to use. There is a two attribute like this. And we're going to say where each of these links go to. Well, I've got one that's going to go to films. That's what's going to be written inside the location bar. One for people and one for planets. Those are our three endpoints. Those are the things that we wanted to search through. So I'm going to do that. And then inside of here, instead of just closing that off, we're going to There we go. This is going to be the text, as you would normally with an anchor tag, just the text that you want to show. So we'll say films and people and planets. All right, so we'll save that. And now what we have done is basically create the same thing as we had before. There's film, people, planets. There's no CSS applied to those right now. So we're just going to jump back and we'll add some CSS. So inside of here, nav.js, we've got some nav.css. And I'm actually going to give this a class name as well. I'm going to call this, let's say, main nav. And we'll come in here, give this the class name. There we are. And we have to import it, of course. So import nav.css. There we go. Okay, so we're back to what we had before, basically, except now these are React Router links. I don't know if you can see it down at the bottom corner right here. When I mouse over planets, localhost 3000 slash planets. So when I click on this, it's actually changing this. Now the page is not reloading, but this is making the URL change. So we can now take that information and render something different on the page. All right, so let's jump back in here. We're done with nav. We've added the link tags. That's all we needed to do. Import and add the link tags. Close that off. The index.js, we've added browser router, so we have access to all these things. Now, inside of my app.js, I'm actually going to strip a lot of the stuff out of here. We're going to build this in a slightly different way. So terms, that's the search terms coming from the search bar. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to scrap this. I'm not going to do my fetch up inside of app. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part of the page right here where search results was loading and I'm going to do my search inside there. And inside that component, I'm going to load films and film or people and person and planets, planet. So that's what's going to be loaded here. 
inside of the component that I'm going to place here, I'm going to make that the main component. That's where I'm going to do my search and that's going to load this. And then I'm going to do a secondary level of routing inside the app to render the single page over here. Okay. So let's strip out the results, the data type. We don't need that. So the, uh, data type that's going to be coming from the routing and the search results we're going to generate down inside that other component. Right now we're going to do set terms because this has to do with the keyword from the search, but the rest of this use effect, use effect and the fetch data, we're going to scrap all that. We're going to really simplify our app component here. So it's got that name, this stuff and the keyword search. And then I'm going to replace search results with just that simple component that I made, the one called main. And that's it. We'll have to import that. So I'm going to get rid of search results there. We don't need it, but I will import main. Okay. So that's in there. We have, that's the whole main component now. And here's the main component container for lists and detail. So it's just sort of an empty container here, but if we scroll through this, we'll see sure enough at the bottom, there is main. Okay. We're going to go into main now, and I'm going to do the routing, the stuff from react router. So we did browser router in index.js. We did link inside of nav.js. switch and route. That's the part that we're going to do right now. Okay. So let's jump into main. Here's main.js. And right here, we're going to have to import those things. The switch and route that is. Now we have access to those. And because this is tied to React Router DOM and we put that browser router up at the top, we're going to have access to all kinds of great information here. So I'm going to scrap this paragraph. I don't need that right now. What I want to do is add a switch and inside of switch, I can put as many routes as I want for each one of these routes. I can put a component inside like this. So for example, films and my route is going to have a path. This is what path do I want to match? Well, if that is the path. This is what I want to show. If the path is people, the component I want to show is people. And if the path is planets, I want to show planets. Now the way this runs is the first matching path is the one that is going to be rendered. And then the rest of them will not be rendered. It's kind of like a switch case statement in JavaScript. So I'm going to come down here and add one more route. And I'll show you another way that we can do this for rendering the component. That is, I'm going to say path is this. So the home path, if we get to the home path, after all of these. So if it wasn't this, 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 then we're at the home. What I want to do is I want to render the component called home. And that was another one of these components that I added. It's just a very basic one. Now I got red squiggles here because I have not imported those. So let's go and do the imports for those things. Home and films. Okay. So we have all those imported now. And here we are. We've got films as the route. 
So the films list, that films component, if we open it up here, films list search results, the people one says people list, the planets one says planets list. So as I move between these, we're actually rendering different components. And we can watch down here inside of the main, instead of films, we're going to be rendering people, then we're going to render planets. And as we move back and forth, it's different components that we are actually rendering here. Okay, close that off. So there we have this. Now, if you ever do want to put this, or if you're running into a situation where there's a path that's grabbing the URL and it's rendering that before something else or instead of something else, you do have the option. There's a property that we can add called exact, meaning it will not render anything but this. So it has to match exactly. We do have to be at the root, not the root plus something else. Or here, if I add it exact, that means it's got to be exactly planets, not planets plus something else. That's what the exact keyword does. And there's another one that we can add in here called strict, which will limit it and say that uh, you can't have the trailing slash either. That's not going to match. But for what we want, this is giving us all the parts that we need. Okay, one last thing that I want to show you. You can render them this way. So inside of route, you can put films or whatever the component is. If you've got an opening and a closing route, you can say component and just say, this is the one that I want to render. One alternative way to do this instead of with component is you can say render, and this is actually going to be a function. So inside of my function, like this, I'm going to return my home component like that. So that way, this is like a functional component. What I've got inside the render method, this is a function that's going to run. It's going to return something. In this case, it's going to return a component object for me. But it gives me the opportunity that I could do some logic, some calculations, whatever it is that I need to do in order to possibly pass through some customized elements inside of here. But render, that method is going to run and return home. And that is, if we don't have something here, now we've got the home page component being rendered. Scroll down here, there is home. So this is all working now. So we've got film, people, planets, and nothing here. We get to the home. All right, next video up, we're going to be talking about passing through parameters uh, through the location bar, getting this a little bit uh, more customized, being able to put something inside of one of these elements. So inside films, people, planets. So a secondary level of routing can take place as well. So we're going to do that in the next one. We're going to talk about passing through uh, numbers in these paths. Like right now, this would work for people. It would look for work for people number 345. It would work for that. It's anything that starts with slash people is going to match and load this. So we're going to take advantage of that and go into here. I'm also going to talk about 404 pages and redirects that we can do when things are not working or missing or have no matches. All right. So hope that helps you out to get started with routing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.